because we don't know what exactly the goblins are or whatever is around here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to assume to a certain extent it's, it's sort of elemental in nature or land-based. So we have candles that represent each one of the elements, earth, air, fire, water. And then... We left some tobacco and um, burned some candles just out of respect for whatever's potentially there. And let it know, listen, this is what we're here to do. We're here to communicate. So if you want to come and communicate with us, we the door is wide open and we're inviting that uh, communication. So Dana did a small ritual where she burned some candles and she made an offering of tobacco uh, to these entities or spirits or whatever they are in order to more formally set why we were there and what we were hoping to get from them. And if you're interested in communicating with us, that's what we're here for. If, if there is anybody here, anybody that we can't see right now, spirits, I'm not sure who we might be addressing here, but uh, we are here to learn about you. We're here documenting, but in reality, you're the star. We're here because we were called, because we want to know more about you, because we respect you. And as long as you have good intentions, we are more than willing to communicate with you. I think the thing that caught my attention was like, Kind of like a wooden knock. That was a wooden knock. Yeah. That's what I heard that first time. I heard that too. From two I different mean, directions. We kept it broad. Couldn't <laughs> 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 like, I'm out. <laughs> Almost immediately after Dana did her ritual, we were hearing wood knocks that were seemingly communicating with us. Uh, both sides of us. Things were being thrown from the forest at us. Uh, there were a lot of noises that we tried our best to kind of rule out as natural animal noises, but a lot of these things were, were a little, they felt a little too pointed. And they started a little too quickly after we had done these intention setting experiments. Uh, it's the type of phenomena that we have witnessed before in Bigfoot expeditions. Uh, and we'd done the same kind of those intention setting things during Bigfoot investigations. So almost immediately, it, we got the overwhelming feeling that we were being watched and that we had successfully drawn something in. Can you come on a little closer? Okay. Yeah. It just threw it back. It back. It went, it went, did it back. That was really loud. That was really loud. Yeah, that was really loud. That was a whistle. It wasn't like... The bear couldn't get through this. No. Hmm. I heard it, it was a little bit more croak-ish. 
mm. not like a frog, but in response, he was like, mm-hmm. it was kind of a, and it went up like your whistle did. Like a mimic, kind of. A little more guttural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe we don't speak the same language, maybe we don't understand each other very well, but I think we can understand the vibe we're putting out. What are you doing, Greg? Newkirk says it's right behind you. It's going to go still. Okay, well, that's officially out. Well, thank you for being here. We, we'd like, we want to continue talking with you, though. Maybe there's another way we can talk to you. Mm-hmm. That's another way we could try. From there, we moved to the front porch and we began setting up our spirit box experiment, the Estes method. Connor puts on a pair of very noise canceling drummer headphones uh, and he pipes in a spirit box feed. Now, a spirit box is a controversial device in ghost hunting where it scans through these radio stations, very high rates of speed. You are going to get clips of DJ voices, commercials, uh, talk shows, especially on the AM frequencies. And so it's normal to hear voices out of them. But with all the static, with all the noise, with all the blips and bits of sound, it's very easy to kind of hear what you want to hear out of it. We created this method in order to cut the receiver off for more anticipated responses in the hopes that our conversation that he couldn't hear would line up with the responses that he's giving back. We also put a blindfold on so that there's no uh, environmental sensory influence about what that conversation is. So that if we do get some compelling responses back and forth conversationally, that is much more interesting than potential responses that we thought we heard through a noisy feed. Just a car sound of like. You know why we're here? You know what we're trying to do? What brought us here? That's me, sir. You know what brought us here? That's me, sir. You know who Terry R. Wrist is? Do you know who David Christie is? Feasible. Right there. Batman? Mothman? You can, Carl. I can what? I have a really important question, which might be why. We're Careful. Having... Careful. I just clumsy it's, oh, set it's like it's got a little bit of a delay on it. It's sometimes it's just like a short delay. There's a coyote. Oh shit. <laughs> What? Where? Where is doing? The, where is the coyote? Right there. To the left or to the right?
over here. They're over there, boo. Thank you for the warning. Maybe there'll be a coyote tomorrow. Some people call you a goblin. Do you like that name? Get ready. <laughs> moving. Are you moving to the cave? The hills. To the cave in the hills? Are you going to meet us there? Right there. Up in the flatwoods? The people. Moving. I wasn't taking any of this into any sort of... I, I couldn't... I had to take it all with a grain of salt. Anything I was hearing. Because all I was trying to do was listen really closely. And it's something that I have had a lot of practice with. And something that I know that a lot of people who watch the method and a lot of people who haven't done it themselves will be skeptical of because I would be skeptical of it, but I know what I heard. Um, and apparently I was narrating what was going on is what they told me when I took the headphones off, which is intriguing. And it seemed like whoever was there was letting us know that they're aware of us and they were right there with us. Can we talk more about this cave? Can we talk about the reason that we're here? Maybe you know more about it than we do. You know who sent us here? Carl, move. Real bad. My camera battery just died. Really? Did you hear that thump? Yeah. Let me grab a fresh one. Mm -hmm. He's open. He did open the door. Probably ten four. Stand back. Are we gonna find what we're looking for while we're here? Leave we alone. Leave it alone? We can't leave it alone. We were brought here. Why are we here? We're here for a reason. Why are we here? Did you bring us here? Did you want us here? What's that? You know anything about the ink and the black? I will. Pattern. Pattern. Is there a pattern we're missing? I'm ready. I want to know. Do we need to use the cipher? Ready. 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 Carl, listen. Listen. I'm listening to a lot. I just got cold. It is cold. What is it? What is what what are you curious ready? about? Ready? We're we're so ready. How does Come on up, get over here. Come on up. Listen. We're listening, we're ready. <clears throat> to that. Yeah, you can come right up. Nine. Nine. Almost sounded like that to you. We heard. That was loud. We heard. That was very loud. W. 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 Who's a W? Wrist? Carry? Aim. 
game. Who's there? Who is there? It's like Mary I just heard like a twinkling noise. That was weird. That sounds like a cypher. Who's in the caves? Who's in the mines? Talking rooster? The talking rooster? No, it's not. Get him off. No, it's not. <laughs> Girl, talking. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Or are we or is there a girl in there? That's a lot of what people hear in that one cave. Maybe it's a woman, not a baby, like a higher, more higher voice. We keep hearing a lot about. What's the hold up? You tell us. We're trying to get there. Where should we go next? The mountains. That's where we're going tomorrow. What should we be looking for in the mountains? Girl seems ready. Yes, sir. We're all ready. Thank you. Is there something Dan is supposed to do when we're there? Are we going to meet you? Exactly. Is, is that it? Maybe? Is that it? Who's talking? Carl. Like, I'm not a I don't feel like... Okay. Hold on your show. Bloody? Shape? That was something. Who's throwing things at us? I thought it was a car. It's another one of those rock ones. You already know. Wrist. We already know Rick. Oh, so we know who he is. Can you tell us what his name is? Tell us his name. His real name? What's his Holler name? Holler him Cole. Order. The third order? I heard that they're MIA. Oh, it's there. It was wild. Like, the stuff that was happening just... Um, there's no logical explanation for the types of, of things that were happening during that and the way that it was happening. Like, it was basically precognition. There. Watching. We're watching. Who's watching? <coughs> You're not alone. Who's watching us? Maybe. Us. I think. Step forward. Ah, book. The book. Okay, that's got it. It's right there. Yeah, it is right there, right? That's record it. Record it. You just said record we are, it. We are. Whatever.
everything aside from normal. talk about Terry Wrist again? Got the impression maybe he was Indrid Cold? Carla? Carla's Indrid Cold? That's twice it's implied that. Last time we were talking about who Indrid Cold was, it talks about me. Yeah. Why do you think Carla's Indrid Cold? Over the top. A little bit. It is, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> That's a bad arc. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't think that'll fit. That's not true. <laughs> that's that's, that's true. true. The truth is, truth is straight to the fiction, I guess. Okay, hold on. Take your time. Forty-eight minutes. Is that how long you've been doing that? Son of a bitch. Forty. We gotta check that. Forty-eight minutes. Forty-eight minutes. Did it changed again? Yeah, it's like I'm fine. Feel, yeah. We um, came running over here chasing some fucking goblin and Connor narrated it. And it feels fine Connor. now. Connor? Yeah. Like a whistle Can you help us find Indrid Cold's house? I'm, uh, hidden flat. The flat? A hidden flat? Flat. A hidden, is there a flap no one's found yet? A cave? Like a UFO flap? Encompass. Encompass? Is it even, What's in, what is encompassing? Encompass? Still water. Still water. It's encompassing still water? Bridge? Still water is the bridge. Of, frown, of, of town. Still water bridge? Ready? We're always ready. Two star. Two star. Mountain green. Thank you for talking with us. So what? The world's ready? Is the world ready? There we go. I just saw like a tin can. Just dropped into my mind. Like an old tin can. No label. I feel like if my eyes are watering a little bit, I feel like it's over. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's over. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for talking to us. Alright, you take this off. So we're talking to me. Thank you. Everyone does. Thank you and folks do this. That was one of the weirdest things I've ever been a part of. So much of it matched mm -hmm. what we were, and you were discussing. Yeah, and you would like, you would respond to like things we were physically doing. Like Constantly. If, yeah. Every time Carl would move something, 
you would say like Carl stop or like like mm. a, and just that kind of stuff. Like I kept hearing your voice. I think that was the only voice that I, like your name was the only name that I heard. Oh yeah, you said it a lot. And um, I it's been a long time. I don't remember when I had a image like that pop into my mind. A tin cup, um, tin can. Just like five minutes ago. But uh, not like I'm sitting there and I, hear, and I just I'm sitting there and suddenly just a just a tin can. So I thought it was worth saying something because it felt very random. Are you recording for forty eight minutes? We're gonna check it. We were gonna check. I heard that. Oh yeah, that was super weird. Forty eight minutes. That's great. Yeah, we gotta check the time on that. Mm-hmm. That's great time. That was really neat. That was that, yeah, it was really that cool was awesome. to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd be part of that. Mm-hmm. For the most part, that was a really interesting experience, and I felt like we were definitely tapping into something more than just, uh, you know, the coincidence of having a word come up in in relation to what we were doing at that moment in time. It seemed stranger than that. It seemed more in touch. There was a, there was an alignment happening, very much so. I felt that first night. And then I was taken aback because something happened that had never happened before. Um, I saw something. I saw it so clearly. It was a tin can. Um, just jumped into my head. Uh, and I had to say something because it was totally unprecedented. And this tin can just suddenly appeared in my mind. I could see it clear as day. It was a tin can just sitting there in this blank space with no label. Um, That's it. It was a tin can. And I didn't understand it, but I thought it was worth mentioning because I've spent so many dozens and dozens, probably over a hundred hours on the spirit box. And I've never had an image pop into my head like that. The next day was the day that we decided we were going to go straight to anyone who could give us information about David Christie. We wanted to see if we could make a more pointed effort to find who this person was. And that was going to be looking up all the the town records. Did he buy property? Did he have a driver's license? Did he exist in this town for the eight or nine months that he claimed to have stayed there? Yeah, so day, day three was like a boots on the ground day where we were just out in the town knocking on doors and walking into people's offices and asking where is david first of all and then have you experienced anything weird i'm a paranormal investigator here out of cincinnati okay. and there was a guy who a few years ago called us to the area uh i'm looking to see if he ever actually lived here he okay. gave me a name and i'm just trying to figure out where i would check to see if there's any records of this guy actually living around here. Because he's just kind of disappeared. This is a case we're really trying to get to the bottom of, and so let's go. Let's go into town. The nearest town center was Pikeville, and we went in and walked around to courthouse after courthouse. We went to the county surveyors, um, the county assessors. We went to the sheriff's department. Uh, the property value assessment office would be the perfect place to tell us if a person named David Christie had ever owned property in that town. We were showing everybody these photos asking for records of David Christie. There had to be some sort of a record of this man existing in this community. The team of us were sort of passed from courthouse to courthouse to records building to police to back again. So Greg, Dana, and I decide to go in and start to ask around about this individual. And we talked with these individuals. We walked up and the clerks looked through 
all these different records. They sat there as they typed away. And in the end, it was pretty clear to us that no one by the name of David Christie had ever existed on the grid in Pikeville or Hellier. No David Christie. Nothing. Alright, talk to us. So, David Christie does not exist. He is not from here. David has no record of any driver's license, no record of any property uh, in or around Hellier. No one recognizes him. And they were extremely helpful, went into the records, found that David Christie had never owned property in or around Hellier. Um, so we checked uh, even driver registration records. Nobody by the name of David Christie had ever registered a vehicle in town. So that was real information. That was like, you know, no hemming and hawing. There was, he never owned any property in the area. That doesn't mean that he doesn't, he didn't rent property and it doesn't mean that he didn't have property handed down to him, which is something that absolutely could have happened. But uh, we knew for a fact that there was never a man in Hellier named David Christie who owned property at all. So that was a big red line through his name, I think. It's possible that he could have flown under the radar, but his, his name at least was starting to get less credible, even as his story became a little more credible because we were believing based on all of our observations of this town that yeah, this could have taken place in Hellier, Kentucky, right outside of it. Um, everything made sense in that regard, but the name didn't appear to be real, which was a point of frustration, but also a sense of relief because we were able to sort of close one portion of the case. Uh, and it was, it was exactly what I expected to happen. We had a lot of people talking to us about their own personal experiences. That same weird phenomena that kept happening where people, they would immediately say, ah, we never get any weird stuff like that. Once they think about it and you talk to them for a little bit, they go, but there was this one time. So we found out that, yes, people in the towns around Hellier are experiencing paranormal activity. And they're not just experiencing paranormal activity, but they're experiencing things like watching UFOs float in the sky so long that they just get bored and move on. We had a woman who was a psychologist, you know, tell us this crazy story about how she believes that her family was being uh, attacked demonically. But they used a really interesting word that I'd never heard ghosts described as, which was critters. They had a problem with critters. And even the local priest said, there are critters all over here and they attach to people and their families and properties pretty easily. So that I thought was pretty interesting, uh, which really says a lot about the lens that people view paranormal phenomena through. We went into the gas station to meet with Tammy and discuss uh, how her grandsons were going to help us get up to the Flatwoods to check out these caves that had a weird old burial ground, uh, and they seemed kind of afraid of it, and see these footprint photos that they had of these, these strange prints in the mud. So it's like, great, finally, we have a cave, we're gonna go. Then Tammy walks out and says that her grandson decided to go hunting. So that's not gonna work out just so happened to meet, by complete accident, this guy named Joey. Joey was an amateur caver and had lots of stories around that area of, of really crazy caves. So we started to ask about any caves around the area, particularly things that might have had strange stories and odd folklore and weird sightings attached to them. And then as he eased into the story, he started to tell us about finding weird carvings, carvings of flaming eyeballs on caves, carvings of snakes, carvings and statues of Chief Cornstalk. Which, oddly enough, is the same land and the same Native American legends that were tied to the Point Pleasant area where the Mothman case took place. 
And then he said, well, you know what? There was this weird cave where they found this strange three-toed footprint. You never saw a picture of the footprint? Well, uh, the one that he found? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen photos of it. What it looked like? Been, it looked like a bird. I mean, he just had three, you know, just like a, like a bird, like an eagle or something. But it was as big as he had. You could stick your hand down in it like that and it would be bigger. That's what the photograph had his hand down in it. Okay. But it was in dust inside of a cave, you know. Yeah. You would think that over the years it would have covered away. up, yeah. So it looked like it could have been fairly recent, maybe? That's what they thought, yeah. But the, the, I, he got a letter back from the university and they told him they thought it was a prehistoric footprint, but they couldn't tell when it was made yeah. or what made it, you know. Uh, apparently the local university had studied it. And he, he said, well, you know, that might be a cave you guys could check out. So we spent a lot of time getting a lot of coordinates from Joey for different caves and caverns and places that uh, seemed like they might be a good fit for our investigation. And he gave us his number and said, if you have any issues or anything, please feel free to give me a call. just was, it seemed more than coincidence. It was this thing that kept happening, this theme that kept occurring, which was wild goose chase, brick wall, another yarn to another wild goose chase. We felt like we were trapped in a maze. got back to the cabin probably an hour after we'd spoken with this gentleman, Joey. It's really frustrating that every single time it's just something else that's new. And all the like all these weird little threads just keep coming together mm -hmm. and pointing to different things. Like the chief cornstalk thing is the one that like now I'm sitting here going, well, I got to read everything about that and figure that out. And so that guy said that he was in cave. He, there, there were pictures of him like yeah carvings of him like on the sides of brought it up. Out, yeah. of out of nowhere yeah i mean he found a lot of stuff really. a lot of these old carvings and stuff like native american yeah. Carvings. Yeah. yeah there's one uh a great one have y'all ever heard of the uh and i'm sure you've heard of shawnee indian tribe you know? oh, yeah, they had cheap cheap uh Cornstalk was his name. Cornstalk, yeah. Mothman yeah. territory. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, there's a, there's a cornstalk uh, carved at Clinton, what they call Birch Knob up there. See, there's a knob up there. It's the highest point of High Mountain. Okay. And it's nothing but cliffs. And right on the side of the cliff, there's a cornstalk carved on it. And I actually found another one uh, up here on Elkhorn Creek, but they people defaced it. You know, they spray painted on it first thing, and, really? then, and then eventually they chipped it off, you know, I guess trying right. to hide it from people. So, and that also keeps calling back to the Keel connection, the Mothman connection, mm -hmm. like that weird synchronicity where you had the book now, randomly had the book. It's consistent. Like from the start, I've said that this feels like the closest thing is I can get to a Keel case, to the Mothman case. And then I had the compulsion to listen to Mothman uh, on the drive up. And then Connor, because we've been talking about it, returned my book to me on the trip. And then the ink in the black mm -hmm. is injured cold. Monster. The name the Flatwoods Monster mm -hmm. with the Flatwoods up here is a synchronicity there. Like a town over from mm -hmm. the stuff where Mothman mm -hmm. was happening, Point Pleasant. Yep. Like, this is a hoax. We're taking a bait, and it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. I think what's scary is we've taken the bait so far that we've found something real from a hope. Mm -hmm. I believe the phenomenon is real. I do. It's just a really elaborate way. Just it's just don't. too much. It goes too deep. To do that. So, I don't know if we're going to leave with answers, but I'm glad we're down here looking for them. I'm up at the cabin. I was the only one who got service at that cabin. And I get a phone call and it's Joey. Right. 
Exactly. This is exactly the kind of person we're looking to talk to here, sir. So yes. thank you. Yeah. So you just uh, haphazardly they, just they, ran into him? Yeah, just, just happened to run into him. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. But, uh, Definitely an awesome lead that we're gonna look into. So thank you so much. It's a big help. No, uh, you're welcome, brother. I'm glad I can help. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, you've All become right, an important part of the story here. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, man. But I'll give you a number and I'll text you right to you and we'll get something set up. Great. All right. Well you have a good night. All right. All right. Take care, brother. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Thank you. He accidentally, he accidentally ran into the guy who was that there. was fucking there. And I'm talking to him, and he says, hey, strangest thing, I just ran into the guy on my way home. The individual who was there when these three-toed footprints were captured. Another synchronicity that's astronomically implausible. Even Joey was a little taken aback by the chance of it. So immediately, out of left field, completely by accident, we have a lead on a three-toed footprint in a cave that was studied by a university. And so we got this gentleman's number, and so we have to call him and follow up on this. But this case has constantly led us down an exciting avenue that's a dead end. And we're sitting at a gas station with a dead end the expedition falling apart, Hellier being this black hole of no stories, and Joey shows up. And Joey has the synchronicity of running into the guy he was telling us about offhand from the 80s who had found a footprint. Mm -hmm. A really interesting thing happens uh, that night while we're putting together the next leg of the expedition. I get a text from Tyler Strand while we're on the way back to the cabin that says like, holy weird, I just had a crazy breakthrough in your search for the goblins. Tyler Strand is a wild man. Hello everyone, Tyler Strand here. He's kind of a lone wolf paranormal investigator. We met him a year ago and instantly took to him. He's got a really great vibe. He's super adventurous. You kind of have to be to do paranormal investigation on your lonesome. Uh, but this guy is at an 11 almost constantly. I always describe him as, take the most excited dog you've ever met, put him in a black leather vest and give him the ability to talk. That's Tyler Strand. <laughs> and uh, we've been working with Tyler on a couple other cases and the amount of, of information and tools that he brings to the search are super invaluable. He said, he just answered, yeah, absolutely. I just had a strange occurrence. I mentioned a lead I had to grade, and I just got some new details on that development. I'm not certain how you guys tied in Point Pleasant slash the Mothman to all of this insanity. Well, I do, but you know what I mean. I was just in Point Pleasant, and I have a bizarre possible connection to our good friend, Indrid Cole. That's something that he's bringing in. I totally forgot he was at the Mothman Festival. Yeah. Which was like a week and a half ago. Which was strange timing to begin with. We talked about the goblin search. In fact, uh, Tyler was constantly encouraging us to get back in that hole, so to speak, uh, with discussions about different rabbit holes. And he was really intrigued by this case. Well, he had done a little bit of investigating on his own and had just been at the Mothman Festival uh, like two weeks before this. Hello. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I just I didn't see the missed call. I didn't hear it come through. That's what are you, all right. What are you doing, wild man? <laughs> Where the hell are you guys at? What's going on? 
So what what is this mind blowing stuff? Because there have been a lot of really weird synchronicities on this trip. Well, first we yeah, wanted to talk, want to talk about... talk about synchronicities, Greg. The more we talk, you know what's funny? Because we talked last time, you and I, for some reason, the shit we do, we're always like two halves of a key. So, like, I go... He met a man at the Mothman Festival, completely by accident, who turns out had a real interest in creature sightings that were happening around caves. This guy ended up taking every reference to those that he found in books over the years, photocopying those pages and making his own 90 some page book out of these creature sightings around caves. Wow. I'm like, I need to get my hands on something like this guy is like an awesome like person to have online. Like I have him in my phone. I could probably call him up anytime, man. He's like, so I'm like, I need this book. I'm like, if you can make a copy of this thing, I'm like, that would be great. Right. So fast forward to the following day, which is today. I just got back to my apartment. I stopped at the gym. I was at the gym for a couple hours. And when I pulled up to the gym, I have this thought in my head. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to call that guy now, even though he said he was busy. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to call this guy just so he knows I'm aware of him and that, like, I'm going to be keeping in touch because I want this packet. I call him up, he, he picks up right away, and I'm like, hello, Mike, I'm like, it's Tyler Strand, I'm, I'm calling because I wanted to follow up, he's like, you know what's really weird about you calling me just now, I go, what, <laughs> he goes, you, get this shit, he goes, I was literally trying to scroll through my contacts, I was just about to call you, he's like, had you not called me right now, I would have called you in like 10 seconds. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've heard uh, stories of your research skills, so you've got the, the town and you're right at the same spot we are. We're just <laughs> yeah. lost in this, so yeah, we'll be in touch. Thanks, yeah, my lips are sealed. Ours too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go, keep you posted, have fun. All right, we'll talk to you soon, Tyler. All right, sounds good. Later, dude. Bye for now. Thank Bye. you. So uh, true. Was he, what Did we, you see that? What happened when that he just hung up on that phone call? No. The no. Time on the phone call? No. no. Forty-eight, forty-eight. <gasps> forty-eight. <laughs> Is that not ringing the bell? Forty-eight. Forty-eight minutes. Forty-eight minutes. Is that how long have you been doing this? Oh, bitch. Forty-eight minutes. <laughs> forty-eight, forty-eight. <laughs> Oh, holy shit! Dude, that was That's like a sweet. premonition. Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! <laughs> I what? just started to shake when, That's I at, when so he hung up. I looked weird. at the numbers and I was like, oh, What is happening? Who <laughs> did that record? It doesn't say the full 48s, it just says 48, but it's 48. 48. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Like, what if, what if it was us? It's like, like that's telling right? us, like, yeah. you should have listened to that. That right there them. is a fucked up synchronicity. That's not even a synchronicity. That's, pro like, it was like a premonition. Like a prophecy. Yeah, prophecy. Exactly. <sighs> I didn't hang up. We didn't, like, it just happened at that time. So, so like, uh... And he hung up at 48, 48. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> 